Tesla plans to unveil their new semi-truck later this year in November, but will it be successful? Hi, I'm Ben Sullins with Teslanomics, and today we're gonna to take a look at what we know about the Tesla Semi so far and what impact it might have on the trucking industry here in the United States. The Tesla Semi is reported to get between 200 and 300 miles per charge and drive like a race car. At this range, it technically falls into the long haul category of trucking, but just barely. Tesla has pushed back the unveiling of the semi from October to November, citing Model 3 production bottlenecks and battery shipments for Puerto Rico. But some details have already been leaked. First, we have a spy shot, which appears to match the teaser image from Tesla released earlier this year. And very recently, we have a video of a test mule, which is rumored to be the Tesla Semi with a fake fascia covering it to not arise suspicion. The reason people think this is the Tesla Semi is due to the lack of the loud diesel engine, no visible exhaust, and the speed at which it takes off. Then we have these renderings, which are probably my favorite. One big discrepancy, however, is that this rendering includes sleeping accommodations in the vehicle, which contradict what Scott Perry, an executive at Miami-based fleet operator Rider Systems Inc., said after their meeting with Tesla earlier in the year. The idea being that if the truck can only go two to 300 miles per charge, it really won't be used on the long haul trips where you need the sleeping accommodations. And the reason for that appears to be a challenge that Tesla has with the economics of the vehicle and the battery packs. A typical diesel cab costs around $120,000 before you factor in things like fuel, maintenance, and the cost of the driver. This is where things get pretty interesting for Tesla and how they're gonna compete in this market. If Tesla wants to compete in this industry, they'll need to sell their cabs for around $225,000 or less, according to a report on Tesla Roddy. The report here cites the benefits of reduced fuel and maintenance costs resulting in a better ROI after about five years compared to a diesel cab. This is in contrast to what Adam Jonas, a Morgan Stanley analyst said when he estimated it would be around $100,000 and 70% cheaper to operate. Let me break that down a little bit further though. Jonas and a few others believe that the Tesla will sell the cab separate from the batteries opting to lease those separately, presumably to recycle them and gain margin by reducing the costs over time. This could be a great strategy as Tesla wants these vehicles to become fully self-driving in the future. Tesla is looking to reduce the cost of shipping by eliminating the most expensive part, the driver. As well, if the vehicles are smart enough, they can use a tactic known as platooning, which increase efficiency of the trucks behind a lead vehicle. This is similar to drafting in auto racing, where if you're close enough, you can increase efficiency due to reduced drag on your vehicle. If they pull this off, it really would be a game changer for the industry. It could be a little scary as well. But why would Tesla go this route in the first place? They're consistently making great consumer products that people absolutely die for. I mean, people are waiting in the rain to order a car that they won't get for two years. Why would they even go this way? Well, in short, there's a lot of money on the table. In 2016, the trucking industry in the United States brought in almost $680 billion in revenue half of which is due to these short haul or regional routes that Tesla is likely to compete for. So if we believe these estimates, the Tesla Semi could be a major game changer for them and for the trucking industry itself. One major problem though, where are they gonna manufacture this? So far the Fremont plant is bursting at the seams and wouldn't be a good candidate to make the trucks, so they'll likely need to expand there or open a new plant somewhere else. The batteries themselves also pose a problem since each truck could require up to 600 kilowatt hours or more. That's about the same as six P100D Model S's. While they do have the Gigafactory pumping out batteries, it's not complete yet. So there's a big question as to how many batteries they can really make. The next problem Tesla will likely face is adoption. Even if they're successful, the trucking industry is slow to change and there are hundreds of thousands of regional operators. So the likelihood that they'll receive as much of an ovation as they did with the Model 3 is unlikely. My guess is that when they officially launch their production of the semi, they'll already have some partners lined up that are looking to buy a few trucks and see how it goes. So maybe in five to seven years, this will be a big disruption for the trucking industry here in the United States. But until then, Tesla has a lot of hurdles that it's gonna have to clear before they can really make this happen. 
Interestingly enough, and maybe by coincidence, there are a lot of other companies getting into this race as well. Daimler, Cummins, and Volkswagen have all announced their plans to make electric trucks and commercial vehicles, which would compete with Tesla in this space. Even Toyota is getting into the mix with a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Albeit not electric, it's still a zero emission vehicle. With all of these factors combined, it's gonna be really interesting to watch if Tesla can make a big splash in the commercial market as they have in the consumer space. I'd love to know what you think. Will Tesla win in this space or are the headwinds just simply too strong for them to overcome? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Each week we break down the data behind Tesla. Also, you can get on our email list at teslanomics.co. And lastly, remember, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching.